Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everybody and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 53. Been kind of a quiet week. We have lots of great things to talk about. Thanks for joining us. Well, the weather definitely has been hot around here in Arizona. It's been averaging about 105 up to 107 every day. And it's just too warm to do anything during the afternoon. So like I've been telling people, you typically do our stuff outside in the mornings or in the evenings. So I've uh, been doing a lot of swimming. That's kind of unusual for us. But uh, <laughs> it's still warm. But there's only, what, a month and a half left of this. And then when September comes, it starts getting to be uh, normal temperatures. So that's about the time that up in the other areas fall hits. And I do miss the colors of fall. Um, I don't think you really see a lot of it down here. But when it starts kind of changing to that cold and then start threatening snow in some of the areas I used to live, uh, I think I'll start appreciating the fact that we are in Arizona and starting to enjoy the nine months of summer-like temperatures. And so... But boy, right now you kind of, it's so easy to forget. I guess it's kind of like being in different states where they get the heavy duty snow and it's kind of like bums you out for three, four or five months. And it's makes all the enjoyment of the summer kind of fade away. <laughs> so that's what's going on here right now is you guys are all enjoying your beautiful summers and a great weather and we're down here cooking. Um, but this is our winter. That's just how it is. We have been getting lots of little notes coming in from our listeners, and we really appreciate that. Uh, a lot of them are uh, either new to RVing or uh, thinking about becoming an RVer. And the uh, uh, the best thing I could tell them is, you know, don't be in a hurry. Make sure you're prepared. Uh, some people, they can do it right away. Others have to plan it out and may take a year or two. Uh, the big thing is think it through. Get yourself settled, settled or and get your finances uh, the way you want. Uh, if you're going to actually travel, you probably may have an income decrease. And so you need to, while you're getting ready, and maybe you're still employed, get your finances, your books, all the things that you need to invest in, your extra equipment that you know you need. And that's what our shows are for, is kind of help prepare you for that. And hit the road. It's uh, time's, you know, time is short. So... Uh, don't hesitate. If you are thinking about doing this kind of lifestyle, go for it. There's no reason to just keep thinking about it. Uh, the hard part is the action, actually making it happen and doing it. You know, I, I haven't heard anybody say they regret it. <laughs> so Anyway, give it a shot. Get moving. Take action. Do it. And that's kind of the theme of the show today is kind of like, folks, you know, uh, we talk about whether you should, whether you shouldn't, um, doing things. And, and you know, you're hearing Sherry and I are looking at changing our scenario a little bit from not only RVing, but introducing sailing to that. And uh, so I'd like to have a, a combination of two types of travel, RV travel and water travel. And I don't know if that'll come true. And, you know, the big part is taking action. People are going to cringe at you. Just like when we say some of the things we're doing, a couple of people go, oh, you're not going to RV anymore. There goes the channel. It's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, you know, um, <clears throat> the one thing I've noticed in RVing, and I've noticed it also in sailing, is sometimes you just need a break from it. And so, and, and I've noticed that with, uh, and aging is a issue too. So I've noticed like when we're uh, watching the sailing stuff, we've noticed that 
younger folks would be out there sailing. They meet older folks that are maybe living on these different paradises of islands and Mexico and et cetera. And they used to be sailors. Well, when you get to a certain age or if you are doing it hardcore, you get to a point where you say, you know what, I'm ready for a change. Put me back on land. Uh, same thing happens with RVing. If you do a lot of it and that's all you're doing, um, there'll come a time, and it happened to me and Sherry back in 2006, you just say, you know, uh, I kind of still want to go back to having a house or something. And so uh, that's kind of what we're addressing is when we get a little tired of just being in this RV and stuff, we can change it up and we can uh, – and, and looking at the sailboat and the sailboat cruising world – that's another RV livable, uh, live, it's a live aboard setup that we're doing. So, hey, when we need a break from the RV and we want to change it up a little bit, we'll change our surroundings and move over to our other house. Kind of like snowbirding, same concept, just using a boat and a RV. So, uh, the adventures will still be there. There'll be times where Maybe we're working on that. We need the RV to live in. To We're going to use the RV as a tool, just like the boat will be a tool. And that's a lot of things we talk about in this show is how many things you can do with an RV, not just go camping over the weekend. RVs have become a, a resource for people in their careers, uh, possibly doing training in another state, and they have a home. They use their RVs for all kinds of things like that. And then there's just plain old minimalist living where you can use an RV to get rid of all that junk you own and free yourself up. And then if you're not, don't have this big overhead of keeping up a mortgage and utilities and two car garage and all the things that go with that and keeping up the yard and all that, you have extra money to go enjoy life. So even if you're using an RV and stay in one place with it and you have a career, maybe even a kid or kids, um, you're going to free up some money. So then the weekends are quality weekends where you can just afford to do things, afford to eat out, afford to go on an extra trip, maybe afford to go fly somewhere. It's uh, just the doors are wide open. And the same thing happens with the sailboat area. Um, when done right, just like with RVing, when done right, uh, you can uh, enjoy this wonderful world in a cost-effective way or you can do it expensively. And the same thing happens with RVing. And so the big part is making that change, making that decision to do this. And we're having the same tug-of-war in our minds too, like, not everything makes sense, and it doesn't sound like we're going to have enough funds to do what we want to do. How can we change that? Because if we travel RVing and sailing, cruising, uh, our income will drop significantly. How are we going to maintain that? And so, you know, there's things like other kind of careers. There's uh, We're actually talking about writing a book over here. I've actually written two books called RV Secrets uh, back in 2007. And which now we're giving uh, free to our Patreons. When they sign up, they'll actually find that there's a link to those two books we wrote back then. They're not real big books. They're more like journals. And uh, and a lot of free items with that. And uh, so we're changing the way that we view getting our income and getting help and support for the videos and the productions that we do. And so... That's a mind-boggling thing. And, and there's other things that uh, people do, services and uh, uh, consulting and things like that. So uh, it can be done. You just got to open your mind and let it happen. So kind of staying on the subject of making it happen, I'm actually reading a book from a gal named Annie Dyke. And she... Uh, uh, D-I-K-E is how she spells her last name. And she's written a few books. And she talks about, now she's really into sailing. Um, but she talks about the same things that we talk about here in the RV industry. Um, that life change. 
And so what's really interesting about this gal is she was a she got her degree. She was a lawyer. She was playing the game. She was making big bucks. Um, kind of recognize that story. And uh, really, when she wrote her book, and I haven't got all the way through it, but very detailed about the feelings. And, and some of them are feelings where you kind of like, uh, you're almost embarrassed that you're thinking like that. And you get to work and you go, you're tired about being around the crazy people you're in and uh, uh, gossip and uh, the game of trying to make more money and, and the game of going home and buying things that you don't really need and the game of having something better than your neighbor. And then maybe even being in a marriage where you feel like uh, it's just going through the routine and stuff. So her life was dramatically uh, uh, changed by sailing. And, and some people have actually had the same thing through RVing. And so you, you have to admire uh, someone who's able to, you know, we're all programmed. It's kind of a paradigm thing that we're all programmed in different ways by our parents uh, and society of a certain way that we're supposed to live. And uh, she called it like uh, a prison or a cell that we create for ourselves. You, you know, you like you buy a house. Well, now you're in prison by the mortgage and then that house to maintain the house it's now you're now trapped it's it's controlling you and then the cars and the fancy stuff and the more money you make the more you spend the more you have to maintain and it just it's a catch-22 and you just don't know how to get out of it and it's like and you're so deep into it where you have a car loan a mortgage loan uh cable bills and etc and you're just you feel like you're so deep into it and that's why sometimes it takes uh, months or years to make a plan to escape it the big part that she was trying to get point out in her book is to uh, recognize it and then start digging away with this it's like being in a, a concrete prison and chipping away trying to get out and you may not even have a plan. You may break out and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. But her point is, is just get out there and it will come. You can make it and mold it the way you want it to look. She also kind of described it. It's just like uh, you're just spinning your wheels and it seems like it's just over and over. And you're just changing it up a little bit. I've, eating at really nice restaurants and, and going in and having drinks with uh, other people you work with. And, and you just got this, um, and, and she said, you know, she was in school and stuff. She was, uh, in good health and, and, and thin and stuff. And as soon as she kind of got into this corporate scene, um, you know, pretty soon you're too tired to go do anything. You're trying to, you're working late all the time, trying to be the, uh, the ultimate, uh, lawyer type thing and she started gaining weight and, and figures she says I'm getting soft and and it's just she says it's really you're killing yourself to meet this corporate standard um, and you know everybody has a different kind of lifestyle but she was this is just describing hers and it was similar to me and Sherry's we're still fighting it of just letting go and just let the universe steer us in the direction we need to go and you keep hearing us on the show it's like oh it's health care is holding us back oh we're not making enough money and and we got the stability the way we are now but we're not happy um how do you fix that and i i don't have all the answers of that other than the fact you need to take action you need to and i call it it's part of another series I do called Imagine 180 is uh, Law of Attraction. And I'm not preaching Law of Attraction on this. I'm just telling you that um, it's a mindset, a mental attitude that everybody has seem, seems like they need to go through to make this happen. And, and it's not just RVing that can give you the, what we call the RV freedom, they say. And we've talked about it in this show, but you can do it through sailing. Some people do it by traveling. Uh, there's, uh, 
And, and my mind has opened up quite a bit to realize that it's not just RVers that have these issues. Um, well, they're not issues, but mindsets that they're trying to break to get out of that uh, old American dream, which is killing us. It used to be practical. Uh, having just one person working in the family was more than enough money. It was adequate to survive. But this day and age, uh, things are just so expensive. And if you live in a city, Lord, the prices of uh, whether you're buying a house or renting is um, over the top. And now, I'm not saying that these other lifestyles are you know are free either. Uh, they cost money, but they are... are can be a, quite a reduction to what we're doing in the corporate American dream kind of lifestyle. And so it's really amazing, and I'm kind of asking everybody to kind of take a look and, and, and look at all these other activities that go along with RVing that people are all going through some of the same changes. Some people just love that 95. They, some people love the pattern. Some people are perfectly happy at coming home and just going through their routines and having in their gardens and and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and if your mindset is in the right place and it's making you happy and it gives you that structure uh, that you enjoy then that's cool but then there's a lot of us that start getting antsy and then the fact of once you kind of get a taste of freedom and in, and a taste of what this world and the United States and all these other countries have to offer uh, and then it becomes almost like an addiction. It's an addiction of freedom, uh, not knowing what's going to happen each day. And that's another thing that Gal talked about was, is getting tired of knowing what's going to happen each day. And when you're in the routine of 9 to 5, you pretty much know you're going to get up in the morning, going to get ready, have your breakfast, drive to work, walk into work, go through the routine, get my cup of coffee or whatever it is, do the job. At a certain time, I get off, get in my car, go back home. Maybe I have to stop and get groceries or something. But pretty much you know what your life is. And so the big description is, is breaking loose of all that and getting the freedom uh, financially um, by paying off debt, not having debt. And ha that means you don't need as much money. You need less money, which means maybe you would just like to be a barista for three times a day just for the fun of it because the money's not the big thing. It's the social outlet and doing something like maybe you really like coffee, then that's what you should be doing. Or maybe you want to be a mixologist and maybe <laughs> go to an island and, and, and serve drinks with somebody, uh, at some real happy beach over in Belize. <laughs> Who cares? Whatever makes you happy, do the things that you want to do. In some of the cases, a lot of people will just do what's called work camping, which uh, they can actually go to if they enjoy RVs that much. And the people, they will actually go work at places that tend to work with RVs. And it could be not just an RV park. Maybe it's actually an RV dealership. Maybe they want to work in service or or, or maybe even sell RVs. Uh, they have certain RVs they really love and they want to represent them. And maybe the money isn't so important to them as that uh, corporate job. Uh, they just want to do what makes them happy in life. And that's that's awesome. Uh, two weeks ago, I think I told you about, you know, we went to San Diego and we went sailing. And the particular um, captain we had was uh, uh, a little older than me. He was 60. He retired um, from a particular job. And now he, he loves sailing so much. He is part of a company that takes people out sailing and also will go on cruises with people trying to get a, a new boat from one location to another and gets hired for that. And he goes, I get hired to do my favorite thing, which is sailing. And so that applies to us too at RVing is you can go out and do the things that you want to do. And if it doesn't, has, it doesn't have to be RV related, but your RV can put you close to Maybe you want to do something along um, uh, the coast. 
and you know a lot of coast jobs are services and things like that but it's not the fact of uh, that the money is so important as it is the location or being living in a quality place that you've always wanted to live and with an rv or a boat if you don't like it you move you go to a new spot and that's the benefits of all these things that we're coming across of of freedom uh, freedom of debt freedom of being in the corporate scene freedom of having that pattern life what if you don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow imagine that think about right now can can you just say what's going to what's going to happen tomorrow what's my routine tomorrow can you say it do you know what it is then you have to ask yourself, is that okay with you? Or are you just fed up with the fact that I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know what's going to happen the next day. I know what I'm going to do Wednesday, Tuesday, uh, Friday, Saturday. And then with Saturday, I go through the same routine because I'm exhausted from the week. Is that your life? And is that what you like? And once again, that's okay if it makes you comfortable knowing that that kind of lifestyle is good for you then great but if that bothers you if you're tired of it then you need to start taking action how does that action look it may start saying okay if i'm going to do this lifestyle i probably won't make as much money so what do i got right now that would cause me a problem if i made less money well maybe i have a car payment well maybe you need to put out a two-year plan and say i'm going to have this car paid off in a year and a half uh, maybe you have a mortgage. Well, maybe I should get out of this house, sell my house, and get into an RV early and reduce my overhead and start saving money. Or maybe I have a bunch of uh, a student loan that I need to take care of. Uh, that's what I mean by building that plan. And that's you're kind of chipping away at the concrete to get out of that cell that we've all been living in. Um, my wife is still kind of in that cell and trying to find a way to uh, get her comfortable of getting out of that cell and chipping away at it and we're doing it and my wife kind of likes pattern and she likes uh, answers and she likes to know what tomorrow's going to look at but then the other side of her she's kind of like a right and left brain battle likes to be spontaneous and likes things to be like um, a surprise and she digs that and so um, it's a struggle. It's not an easy thing to make this change of freedom, this attitude, this action of becoming free at doing what you want to do and seeing the world. And seeing the world will actually make you so much of a better person. Learning that the world doesn't operate just like the United States learning that people help each other, learning that what's more important to some people is a roof over their head and food um, and family. And other countries in some areas are superior to us in that area. At the same time, we've got a lot of things that are better here. Um, anyway, it's Getting exposed to all this, meeting new people, going to other places will inspire you, open your mind, and even make you appreciate the United States and where we live more today than maybe what's going through your head right now. By looking around and seeing uh, the world and meeting other people, uh, you can start getting that balance in your mind psychologically of what life is all about. Wow, that was kind of funky music. <laughs> hey, we got to jazz it up here once in a while. So, <laughs> Anyway, so I got to give you a little bit of report of what uh, Sherry and I are up to for this week. And by the time you hear the show, we actually I'm doing this uh, before the weekend. So after the weekend, we'll be back from when I'm going to tell you we're going to do. <laughs> you got that? <laughs> so we're going back. Yes, we're going back. To San Diego and this time we're taking cinder uh, so we're gonna go look at two other boats 
And so we got two sailboats in mind. We I meet. We uh, met a nice gentleman. And uh, go check out, check them out, and then take Cinder with us. And we're going to actually see another part of San Diego that we didn't get to see that much of. Is more over by the Sea World side of things. So we're looking forward to that, and uh, I'm sure we kind of have some limitations because we'll have Cinder with us. But uh, that's okay. Um, I just don't want to keep putting Cinder in all these uh, kennels all the time. So we're going to attempt to do this with Cinder, and Cinder should enjoy that. And so it's not that hard to ride. And so uh, we're going to shoot over there. And then the following week, Sherry and I are actually flying down to Texas. Uh, over by uh, Kema, which is K-E-M-A-H, I think, uh, Texas. And we have a boat to go look at over there. But we thought it would be kind of cool. We've never been to the Texas coast. So we thought that would be kind of cool to check that out. And um, I hear there's some interesting things to see along the coastline there. So we're going to take four days. We're going to fly down there. So Cinder will have to stay in a kennel this time for that. Uh, but we're kind of looking forward to that and giving you guys some uh, really cool glimpses of, uh, of what goes on down there in Texas along the coast. And it's a totally new for Sherry and I. I think the only thing that will be a shocker to her and I is my understanding there's humidity there. And we're not used to heavy humidity. So that's, we got lots of stuff going on. So busy, busy, busy. But... This brings me back to the main part of the show is taking action for your new life. And so uh, my big message is it's okay to dream, it's okay, but you need to start taking action. You need to start walking the, uh, walking the talk. And it's okay if it doesn't happen. Really. I mean, there's... and. I do not ever want to be the person that you go to and say, well, he never tries nothing. He just sits there and talks. No, I walk the talk. I try. And uh, sometimes I'm scared. Sometimes I got to prepare for it. And all this work that Sherry and I are doing and these places we're going to check out the sailing side of things may not happen. So what? My point is we tried and, like I was talking earlier, I don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. And I don't know what the weekend's going to look like. Because it's new. And it's great. And uh, it's an adventure. And it could be a terrible weekend. It could, be, it could go all muck. And if we go to Texas, we could miss our flight. Or maybe Texas isn't as cool as we think it is. Uh, who knows? But the fact is, is, it's a venture, and we're doing it together, and we're gonna, we have some challenges of getting from one point to another, and renting a car, and and going to an area we're not familiar with, and people are different, and uh, surroundings are different, and it's a different state, and it's like that's my point. This whole show, that's my point, is breaking out of your cell that thing we develop and, and here's a good example and I, I I'm gonna move back to some old past is I used to own my own retail store in fact I had four of them and I've told you this before and they were called cutting edge kites I own four kite stores you know flying kites and this is back in the 90s and it was a great opportunity to start a business and the uh, first one did great and I actually opened up another one on the coast and I had two more in some malls up in uh, Washington State so I had four stores total and you know uh, kite stores during this winter time could be a little slower and we sold toys and things like that too and other stores did better at certain times of the year than others the point is is when I constructed these stores what I really got to see was the opportunity of creating my own cell. Yep, that's what I meant, my own prison. How did I do that? Well, when you have stores and stuff and you tend to want to save money and stuff, a lot of times you may, in the corporate store, the main store, which was in Kent, Washington, uh, I would work that store so I didn't have to pay labor for someone else. You know, that's what business is all about. 
And so my kids were little, and my wife would come, and she had a regular job, and she'd stop by the store, and I couldn't close the store till 8 in the evening. So the kids would come over, play around a little bit in the store, get bored, and Mom would go take them over to go bowling or something without Dad. Why? Because I was imprisoned. I couldn't walk through the front door and go. Why? Because I had a store. I created this cell, this monster of of not not being able to escape the the four corners of the store with all this inventory and my money hanging all over the place. And so that's the same thing that happens in just regular corporate life is you start creating this cell, this thing that you feel like you can't get out of. Uh, yes, the answer to that would be hire people and let people work your store. Well, the reality is, is and if you have a business, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it was tight. It was off season. The cheapest thing I would do is work my own stores when I could. And it's just how it is. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent. And the same thing is uh, we all get into this. And I don't care if you're a mechanic. I don't care if you're an engineer or a lawyer. We all get into this routine. And so... Uh, the kite stores uh, was, to me, I, I actually remember sitting behind the counter looking around at the walls and there was nobody coming in the store because it was late. And uh, I just say, I'm imprisoned here. I And that's one thing I made a big decision in my life is never, ever to do retail stores again because all it is is creating a, 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 a unless you can do it right where you're not working the store, uh, it's just creating a little prison and your whole life becomes that little store. And so that's really something to think it over. But I always ma I've always made sure that I've done nothing but service companies since then. Once again, that doesn't mean that's not for you. Some people like that. And so power to them. It just, um, I just felt like I missed out a lot on my kids' activities and um, time with my wife and family. Uh, luckily, only a year and a half so after that, we sold the stores and got out of that situation. And um, really, I never went back into retail. And uh, so, anyway, I hope that helps. So, building on to taking action and making things happen and start walking the talk <laughs> I was watching I, I, I do monitor other channels not as much as I really reduced it down because I just can't monitor all the different channels out there but I try to catch them once in a while and actually something came across my Facebook and uh, uh, there's a person out there or a, a channel out there that was complaining about someone not putting their fire out enough where smoldering and sending smoke over to their campground and uh, and was really perturbed about it, and I was like, I, I just want to go. Really? <laughs> I mean, is that your only problem in the world? Is it really that bad? Do you have to get onto your social network and tell the world that put your fires out all the way, whatever? And it's like, now, let me tell you what a problem is. A problem is when a doctor looks you in the eye and says you have cancer. That's a problem. Getting in a car accident, that's a problem. Uh, health issues in your family, that's a problem. An earthquake and people die all around you, that is a problem. But someone's smoke going into your campground is an obstacle. That's it. And so I guess another thing I want to put out there to people is like, is before you get twitter painted <laughs> before you get upset about things ask yourself how significant is this problem is is it really so bad i have to even spread the word of my misery to other people and uh and i do it too i, I we all do it and and so i'm not saying i'm not uh, please don't think i think i'm some kind of holy grail here or something uh but the point is is sometimes we need to this before you spout out of what something that bothers us, 
is maybe take the time to say, how significant is this problem? Is it really going to, uh, you know, and then I, you, the people that do it, sometimes you have to also say, is, do you think maybe that folks over there go, I tell you what, let's let this smolder so I can make the neighbor mad. Is that what they were thinking? Really? Do you think that's what they were thinking? Or maybe it was just a little ignorance or didn't actually realize it. Maybe if you, uh, under, you know, bring over a beer and say, by the way, can you do me a favor? And, and I'll help out if you want to. Is If you're done with your fire, can I help you put it out or something? Because it just smoked us out or something. <laughs> and if it blows up into something more than that, then it's like, that is the most ridiculous thing. But... Anyway, so if we're complaining about little things like uh, someone had a light on next door or things like that, really think about what's really, really a problem and, 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 and what really is just an obstacle or something you need to just let go. That kind of stuff will kill you. Why be in this great voyage of freedom and, and retirement or, or traveling and get stressed out by little things like that? The point is, is that's what we're kind of learning how to let that stuff go. So anyway, I just had to bring that up and I'm asking you is, are you doing that? And uh, I try not to do it, but we also got a radio show here. So we kind of bring up controversial things just to get people to talk about it. And that was when I thought this kind of stood out to me this week is like, and I actually wrote a comment back saying, well, maybe you should just go back to living in a house and you wouldn't have that problem anymore. <laughs> I was joking. And I put a smiley face after that, but maybe they might have got the point of going, well, maybe that wasn't so significant after all. So practicing what I'm preaching, I guess, is uh, and, and something I ask myself too, is like, am I letting little things get under my skin? And, and my question to you is, are you letting little things get under your skin? And when you do get upset about something or even jump to the social network to complain about something, ask yourself, really, is this really that significant? Do I need to share this and make other people miserable with me? <laughs> so I hope we don't do that to you. <laughs> we want you to be happy. We want you to enjoy life. We want you to take action. We want the universe to deliver to you all the things you want in life, but it's going to take a little action on your part. Hey, you guys, by the way, the mailbag was a little bit low this week. So I urge you, when you get the opportunity, please go to our website at rvtalkradio.com. Go to our contact page and say, Hey, what's on your mind? Tell us what's good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you got some subjects you'd like us to talk about, um, we're just a uh, contact away, and we will ha be happy to uh, bring up subjects that concern you. We uh, uh, appreciate all the different channels and all the different things that are out there. So a lot of times when we hear some of the subjects you're talking about, they're kind of like, all right. That's true, but have you thought about this and that kind of stuff? But anyway, please, uh, you can also email me directly at Rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. And the other thing, and I've mentioned it before, is we have a newsletter. So if you go to rvtalkradio.com and go to off to the right-hand side, uh, you can sign up for our free, absolutely free, absolutely no charge to you, our newsletter. And how does the newsletter work? People say, well, uh, basically it's an automated system. Anytime we update the podcast, which is our shows, you get an email to remind you that we have a new show out on Monday or Mondays. And so uh, it's all automated. And occasionally, very rare, we actually do a, a post. And if we do, that would be part of the newsletter. And it only goes out once a week. And if you get tired of it, don't want to get it anymore. Right at the bottom, it says unsubscribe, and it's a piece of cake. Just click on it, and you won't get those emails anymore. And then when you find out that you truly miss them, you can always go back and re-sign up. <laughs> so, anyway, we should like to hear from you. Uh, it's really important. 
Um, and don't forget, uh, in the description below is all the links to our different sites, whether it's RV Travel Buddy, Travel Quest, uh, some of the new stuff we're doing in sailing. Uh, if you'd like to get some of our stickers, people love our stickers. Uh, we sell them for five bucks. We don't really make much off of them by the time that we actually put the stamps and mail them out and pay for the stickers and we don't buy big quantities. We'll be lucky to make maybe a buck. <laughs> so anyway, we do appreciate it. And, uh, we are, uh, uh, shopping for patrons now and we have been getting support. Uh, and we truly appreciate that. Um, we got some big projects going on. We're saving up and, and, and uh, putting money aside uh, on our own to try to make some of these things happen so we can deliver some really awesome videos and audio shows to you. Um, I think one of the biggest things I'm saving my allowance for right now is getting a new wireless microphone that mounts on the top of our cameras and has multiple channels. Um, the wireless microphone we have now, we tend to get a little bit of static in, and it's like a uh, $400 thing, but it's actually more affordable than some of the other ones we've looked at. This stuff's not cheap. So anyway, that's why we always appreciate that, uh, the help we get from our listeners and our viewers. So it doesn't go unappreciated, and uh, we invest in you all the time. So uh, anyway we get a chance contact us we appreciate it and uh by the way i wanted to remind you about my new consumer <laughs> consumerism with safeway lately and so i've been actually very proud of myself one is safeway has a app app of course everybody's got an app um and basically it's you tell it what store you're shopping at and so we changed it to the one here in um fountain hills which is, by the way, the best Safeway I've ever seen. And uh, it creates coupons. It actually starts creating uh, discounts for you personally and the things you use. And I really, um, it's actually starting to really save us money. And then what's so nice about Safeway, the grocery stores over here in the West Coast at least, is they have the, for every hundred bucks you spend in groceries, which you know you're going to do, you get, uh, one point or ten cents off on your fuel, and not only do you, can you use a Safeway fuel place, but Chevron also supports them. And so I've just been so tickled about the money we're saving, at least the money I think we're saving, um, which has been very significant. Uh, and 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 just the other day, I don't know how I got it, but there I don't know if it's a personal thing that the manager can do, but I got a fifteen dollars senior discount. <laughs> I'm not really that much of a senior yet, but man, that was like awesome. And so, uh, the super, super neat guy. I think he was the manager. And I think during the afternoons, um, he's allowed to do certain things during the day. Anyway, we got a discount on that. So man, if you can save some money in groceries, do take the time to use the apps. The, um, you have to go in there and pick out and it's kind of funny, before we go into the Safeway, we have to put, turn on the app and click on all these savings and stuff before we go in. But uh, uh, once you kind of learn how to manage it, what a great program. So I hope that's a good save money thing. And, and of course, there's better ways of saving money at grocery stores is actually going to like outlet type grocery stores in there. You can really save some money. And of course, the way you eat and the way you uh, prepare food. Uh, can actually really reduce your bills too. So we're getting better at it. And um, probably the broker Sherry and I get as we do all this traveling, the more that we'll utilize how we spend money on food. I think the best thing that's ever happened to me and Sherry is the fact of I've actually tried to cook a little more, which I need to get better. But I always, you know, guys, we always try to find a shortcut to things. So it's like, well, all right, if I cook this, and I make so much of it, it's good for like two days in a row. That means I don't have to really cook that much the next day. Well, that's how guys think. So what's really been nice about that is, and Sherry's appreciating it, is the fact of our grocery bills lower and we're not buying as many meal meats type thing because we're kind of making, uh, thinking through the menu every week that is cost effective, easy to prepare, 
and still trying to get food that's good for us. And we've really reduced our red meat um, just from age things. And I have diverticulitis, so I think red meat kind of flares that up. And so uh, uh, we're doing really good about like spaghettis. Well, you ever notice when you make spaghetti, it tastes better the second day? The, the sauce. I don't know why. It's a, I don't know, it's an aging thing. I don't know. But anyway, uh, uh, making meals like that that can, um, I think, sure, I just made some ribs the other day that I got at the deli, cooked them up on a old barbecue, and I knew that they'd be good for two meals in a row. So, uh, uh, and then um, thinking through lunches too. Um, certain things that I'll make, like I'll make a big bowl of salad, and I'll say, sure, you need to. We don't want this to go to waste. You use that, you know, take a bowl of salad to the lunch with you. And uh, she still uses like those lean cuisines too. But if her, uh, but remember, she's in that corporate cell. Anyway, but uh, uh, food um, preparation and planning has gotten actually a little better on the old RV ship here. And so uh, I think it's because <laughs> I've had to cook lately. <laughs> and, and uh, so anyway, I think those are the kind of things that start happening when you start getting this freedom is, you know, is you're not, you start utilizing your resources around you and you're not so greedy of buying all these fancy preparation tools and, and mixers and all these things where you go, where you, it really comes down to just good planning, good diets and how to make meals last or feed you more than just one meal. And you can really start seeing the difference in your bill at the grocery store when you start uh, preparing food and shopping properly. And make sure you, if the grocery store you use, make sure that you know, you're using all the tools and resources that they have to help you save money. And some of them really are, will, will save you significant money. And I always tell you, I get these fuel points. And since I got a truck, um, you're always limited to $25 or 25 gallons of discounted fuel. Well, you can't do that in a small car. But with my truck and get my diesel, uh, I wait until I have you know four or five or six points, go to that place and nail them and get 60 or 70 cents off my my uh, per gallon in my truck and get all 25 gallons is an awesome savings for me and Sherry. So anyway, food, preparation, planning, important. It'll make your RV life and new freedom just that much better. So just to recap a little bit of uh, what we've been talking about today, which uh, is Folks are getting ready to come into this world through RVing or whether it's through traveling or just uh, sailing, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, is making it happen. And it takes a plan, but the big part I want to remind you is it's kind of a law of attraction, is you need to start envisioning this lifestyle and you need to act like it's already here. By doing certain actions. For example, Sherry and I, we've been telling you about the sailing. Well, I also told you that we're going to Texas. The reason we're doing Texas is it's a different, a different lifestyle. It's along the coast, and that's an area that we may be interested in boating over to the Caribbeans and stuff. The next thing we're going to do the following month is we'll either going to, and I mentioned this in the last show, either go down to uh, Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, Belize and or Costa Rica or Atlantis. And the reason we want to do that is to expose ourselves to places that we've seen people going to to see it is it looks great on video and you think, oh, it might be really fun to go to those places. But I will, if I'm going to take this action of buying another type of recreational vehicle, uh, I want to make sure that the lifestyle is going to be for me and, 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 and add on to my vision so you need to play the part. You need to go say, put yourself in the scenario. And in Law of Attraction, they say, well, if you want a car, you want to have a certain car you want to buy, start imagining that you own that car already. Go look at that car. Go have, go take a test drive of that car. You may not be able to afford it right now, but tell the universe, this is what you want in life. 
start acting, taking action, getting that vision. And they say, like attracts like. So you send out that kind of vibration, if you're into this at all, the universe will start lining up and making um, uh, opportunities happen to you that tend to go towards your vision. And that's where I also told you to set up a vision board is we have a vision board and uh, everybody's vision board is a little different. Put your goals, put uh, some kind of photo, um, go to the internet, uh, print it out, cut it out, put it on your vision board and remind yourself what your big goals in life are, whether it's um, RV travel or uh, being a snowbird or sailing or or just traveling the world. Um, and it, I don't care what age you are. Uh, maybe it's just good old retirement that you're getting ready to do and you're afraid to do it. And all I can say is the ticker is ticking. And there's some things that I'm discovering now I wish I would have discovered 20 years ago and I would have done it. Um, don't be that person. Be the person that says, I'm going to do it now because... Each time you keep printing it off, is when's the now going to happen? Before you know it, you're going, gosh, what if I would have done that? And I just don't want to be that person. So uh, I hope that kind of explains why Sherry and I do what we do. And it really is helpful. And whether you believe in law of attraction or not, um, this, it's just a spiritual thing. It's, it's a mindset of of having that has nothing to do with religions or anything like that. It's just, um, self motivation, but you'd be amazed that when you start living the dream, even if you're not actually in the dream yet, uh, how things will fall into place. You may run into people that will give you the connections you need. Maybe you wanted to be a, um, (coughs) barista in Belize and maybe you visit Belize and you run into the right person and make, can make that dream come true. That's what I mean by action. And that's what I mean when the line, universe lines up and kind of shows you things that saying, hey, you may not have noticed me before, but I can get you close to, closer to your dream. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, living the dream. That's kind of what this show's all about. Taking action. I know I'm repeating myself. Getting the vision. It's just that important. It is that important to, I want you out here with us, but I don't want you to do it unprepared and I don't want you to come out here before it's time. So I hope that anything that was on the show today inspires you to come out here with us, whether you're going to be a sailor or whether you're going to be an RVer, or whether you just want to be a traveler or maybe you just want to live in a place that you've always wanted to live, but the economy didn't seem like it would be uh, cost-effective for you. Well, living a minimalist kind of life and getting out of debt and those kind of things, you can make almost any dream you want come true. And uh, um, I'm just hoping that you know when these things start happening for you, contact me and Sherry. Tell us what you're doing, some of the dreams you have happening, what you've been doing to make those dreams come true. Share that with us. We'd love to talk about it more in this show. So it's getting towards the end here. I'm Rob Scribner. Thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. You know we love you. We hope you love us. Thanks for being part of our family. Be safe and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.